Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting factorial equation. We have x factorial equals 6 factorial times 7 factorial. In this case, x is a positive integer, but we're also going to look at something for which x is not integer. Anyways, so I kind of show you, I wouldn't call these two different methods, but I will show you two kind of different approaches that we need to take. So whenever you want the product of two factorials, by the way, this is rare, to f the product of two factorials and other factorial, this is what you need to think. I have six factorial, right? So th this is a factorial. And if I multiply six factorial by something greater than six, such as seven, for example, I get 7 factorial, right? Which is a factorial. So, x could be 7, but that's not the case because 7 factorial is greater than that. 7 factorial is greater than 7. So, we have a much larger number that multiplies 6 factorial. So, here's what we need to think. Well, I need to go in consecutive order. So, can I just multiply 6 factorial by a bunch of numbers that start at 7? A product of consecutive integers such that it's gonna give me what I need so something like this 6 factorial how about multiplying this by 7 times 8 here is the rule that you need to follow whenever you multiply a bunch of numbers by 6 factorial that product also needs to be a factorial itself so in this case we have 7 factorial right but when I multiply by that I need to get another factorial so it can only be a product of consecutive integers so when you think about it 6 factorial multiplied by 56 is 8 factorial but 56 itself is not a factorial and we have 7 factorial 7 factorial does not equal 56 so it doesn't work make sense so what else can I do one of the things that I can do is take 7 factorial evaluate it 7 6 5 or break it down like this Okay, I don't think one is going to matter. And then rearrange these numbers together such that all numbers are greater than or equal to 7. And when you multiply together, it's just going to give you the factorial we're looking for. For example, obviously you're going to need a 7, right, to multiply by 6 factorial. But can I like use these two? Okay, that is going to make an 8. So, so far we're good. But then the rest falls apart because... 6 times 5 is 30, they're not consecutive, or 5 times 3 is 15, or 6 times 3 is 18. None of the combinations is going to give us what we want, because we the next number we need after 7 and 8 will be a 9, and then a 10, and so on and so forth. So this is not going to work either, which kind of tells me that this method is not going to work. Make sense? I mean, I don't have to go through all the cases. You can try 6 factorial times 7 times 8 times 9, 6 factorial times 6 factorial times 7, 8, 9, 10, so on and so forth, right? So here's what I'm going to do instead. This doesn't work. We know that because 7 factorial cannot be broken down to give us what we need. All right? Cool. So here's what we're going to do. This approach did not work. So what we need to do is... Use a different approach, right? And don't get stuck on 6 factorial. You could also do the following. Take the 7 factorial, put it aside. So like, okay, leave that number alone. I want to multiply 7 factorial by something uh, like a product of consecutive integers uh, such that all the numbers are greater than or equal to 8. Because think about it. If I multiply 7 factorial by 8, I get 8 factorial, right? Remember, in, with our first approach, we put aside 6 factorial and looked for numbers, like 7, 7 times 8, 7 times 8 times 9. This time, we're looking for uh, from a different perspective. So, for example, if um, I could multiply by 8, but 6 factorial does not equal 8. So, here's what I need to think about. Can I break down 6 factorial? 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, but 1 doesn't matter. Can I break it down in such a way that this number, 6 factorial, is the product of consecutive integers that are greater than or equal to 7? 
What numbers are greater or equal to seven? Come on, you know them, right? Uh, I just used a single eight, it didn't work. Eight times nine, eight times nine times 10, eight, nine, 10, 11. You're so, you'll soon realize that the numbers are getting larger like crazy. But here's what we need. Take a look at this. Five times two is 10. Okay, I could use that, right? And then six times four is 24, but that didn't work. So here's the thing. This, this type of picking two numbers and multiplying together is not going to work because 6 is not prime, 4 is not prime. So I need to break down everything. Let's go ahead and do that. So let's see. This is going to give me 2 times 3. This is going to give me 5. This is going to give me 2 times 2 and 3 and then 2. So this kind of gives me the following. 2 to the 4th power times 3 to the 2nd power times 5. But let's not write it in prime factorization. Let's do the following instead. Pick numbers two or more numbers, such that you can get something like this. Can I do that? For example, can I get a seven? There's no, well, I, do, I don't need a seven, Never mind. Can I get an eight? Yes, you can get an eight, two times, two times, two. That's an eight, great, so I got the eight. Can I get a nine? Yes, three times three is a nine, awesome. And what's left? Two times five, and that's a 10. And yes, this works perfectly. 8 times 9 times 10 is what you're looking for, so here's what I'm going to do. x factorial is going to be 7 factorial times 8 times 9 times 10. So what I did was replace 6 factorial by that, but I had to break it down to see it. Obviously, you already knew that, right? And now this looks like what? 10 factorial, doesn't it? So x factorial equals 10 factorial gives you what? Come on. It's not a million dollar question. It's actually a one cent question, but it's still important. X equals 10. So something to think about. Is there a single solution to this? If X is an integer, a non-negative integer, yes. But if X is a real number, let's kind of see what happens because what I'd like to show you is not a definite solution, but kind of gives you an idea. And also, what do you think this number looks like? What is 10 factorial or what is 6 factorial times 7 factorial? I don't think anybody memorized 10 factorial. The, I think the largest factorial I memorized was 7 factorial and I believe it's 5040 if I'm not mistaken. Okay, anyways, I hope it's right. So x equals 10 works nicely. As you can see, we use number theory. We broke it down and then rearranged the numbers to get a product of consecutive integers that are greater or equal to 7. So we got what we wanted. Let's go ahead and take a look at something interesting. Factorial function defined over the real numbers is actually <laughs> looks like this. You can graph it with Desmos. And it's a very interesting graph because you can use the gamma function to define it. I'm not going to get into that. But uh, you can look up the details. There's a nice Wikipedia page on uh, gamma function, lots of material. You can definitely look it up. And gamma, uh, I believe, in, if I'm not mistaken, gamma n minus 1 should be and factorial or something like that. Anyways, so this number is fairly large, it's 3.6 million. Obviously it doesn't fit uh, on our screen, but if you think of a horizontal line that crosses this graph, it's gonna intersect at very many points. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then be safe, take care and bye-bye.